Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and the episode that you've all been waiting for is here. We're getting started in Beehive. So there are multiple Beehive uh, managers, such as VM Hive, and I think IO Hive, and C Hive, maybe I think there's even like a C Hive or something, I've heard of it. Um, I'm not going to be covering those today. Uh, I will definitely be covering those in a later video, but today I'm going to be covering strictly how to use the command line tool Beehive at its base. So you might ask, what is Beehive? Well, it stands for the Beehive Hypervisor. Um, I would say, I think it's like two-ish years old. I think it was released in like FreeBSD 10. Um, up until like FreeBSD 11, it had it didn't really have any sort of uh, VNC support or any sort of uh, you know actual like you know visual console support. So it was interesting, but you know not really as practical for some. But uh, up in FreeBSD 11, it got VNC support, which is really exciting. Um, unfortunately, my machine is like just at the cusp where my uh, processor doesn't support it, so I actually can't do any VNC uh, tutorials with Beehive this episode. I'm going to try to install it on an older Mac Mini that I have back there um, and see if I can get that working, but for now, we're just going to be doing the terminal. Uh, install and I hope you like it. Also, sorry for the delay. I actually, uh, if you can't tell, I think this video looks better than they normally do. Um, I'm, I, I built a PC. Finally, I was able to finally break down and buy a PC, buy some parts. Um, I have a 1070, which is now off-putting all of my OBS processing. So it's really nice that my GPU can encode this instead of my CPU, even though I do have a 7700K now. So that's pretty nice. And I was also fighting with my stupid network because for the dang DHCP request to get out of the Beehive VM, I had to turn on promiscuous mode in VMware. Um, the likelihood of you actually having VMware and having a FreeBSD server and running Beehive from within it is probably very low, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. But if you do, know that if you want to get DHCP out, you got to have promiscuous mode. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump on into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we have to load a kernel module. We have to load the VMM kernel module. So that way it actually supports our virtualization. Um, also, if you're doing this on VMware, I don't know why you would be, but if you're doing it like I'm doing, know that you have to edit a certain setting in VMware to expose hardware virtualization to the VM. Um, that's probably what took me so long was between all the things I had to enable and disable in VMware, that one and then promiscuous mode were the two that seem to have stuck. So if you are doing that, remember to do that. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to create our virtual interfaces that the VM will actually talk through. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a tap interface and basically create a bridge and connect it to our actual interface of the host and it's going to get DHCP through the bridge and that's how it's gonna communicate with the network. So we IF config tap zero create um, we have to turn on sysctl net dot link dot tap dot up on open. This basically uh, says that whenever the uh, tap interface comes up, it you know or it's opened and it's brought up, it comes up. So that's nice for us. Um, you can set this in you know your regular where you set your normal sysctl variables. Know that you have to load. If you don't do an if config tap zero create, it actually doesn't load the kernel module if underscore tap. Um, so you have to do that. Also if underscore bridge if you don't create it. So we're gonna do if config bridge zero create. And we're gonna go ahead and add bridge zero. We're gonna add the interface. EM zero is what it is for me inside of my virtual machine. And then we're going to add M uh, tap zero. So now they are on the bridge, and now I'm going to bring my bridge up. And now I will have, I have my network interfaces ready for my virtual machine. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna have to do is actually create the hard disk, virtual hard disk of the machine. So what you do with that is you truncate dash S. We're gonna make a, si a 16 gigabyte image, and we're gonna call it guest.img. You can call it whatever you want. So now I have a 16 gigabyte image. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to fetch um, an ISO, a FreeBSD ISO from 
uh, the FreeBSD website. I'm not going to type that out because I already have mine, as you can see. I have FreeBSD 11 release. Um, some people use the boot only ISO because it's easier and then you just set up the network and install from there. I actually downloaded the full DVD, uh, so that's what we're going to use for that. So you actually don't have to install anything uh to do this the beehive is actually in base in 11. um if you want to use it for linux kind of things you'll need to install grub2 dash beehive and we're actually going to try to do some linux stuff next week so the next thing i can do is in user share examples beehive there's a vm run dot sh file and then what i do is i can i do dash c for cores one core dash m i'm going to give it one gig of memory dash t for the tap interface i'm going to give it tap, tap zero dash d for its disk we're going to do guest.img dash i tells it hey we're doing an installation that's lowercase i dash uppercase i uh, tells me where the installation media is and then basically give it a name this is the name that you will use to manage it like if you wanted to turn it off or destroy it or anything like that so you would do this and you hit enter and as you can see, it terminal emulates the FreeBSD installer in my terminal. Um, you could do this with VNC and there's some specific uh, command options you have to do for that. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a system like that that can work at my apartment so that way I can videotape that and we can do that hopefully at a later date. But as you can see now, it is installing. So it will come up and ask you which console you want. I just go with this, the standard. And now it does a console emulator of the installer. So basically just run through your FreeBSD install uh, like you normally would. And once you're done with all of that and you've come back to the screen, uh, basically whenever the, B, the FreeBSD machine shuts down, it, re, it boots in a loop. The way you get out of that is you select reboot here. Apparently I have to type menu. You just type reboot here and it will exit out of there for you. So basically what ends up happening is the installation finishes, the reboot comes around, the beehive script that we ran, the shell script, runs it in a loop and to get out of it, you just hit reboot it there and it drops you out. Now to start the VM, we just do user share examples beehive vm run.sh dash c4, one, not four, I don't have that many processors, <laughs> dash m, 1024 megs dash t tap zero dash d guest.img and then freebsd and it goes through okay and now we log in and i have config we do not currently have a uh, ip address dh client on VT net zero, we got the offer, and now we have our IP address. If, so if you want to actually set up the VM so that way it gets the DHCP on boot, you would basically vim your etcrc.conf, and I guess my home key decides it likes doing that, doing an F, if config VT net zero equals quote, DHCP and that's all you will need and we can ping google.com so we have network we have everything we need inside of our little VM and that's pretty much a free BSD VM okay so now I'm actually back on the base system and if you want to have a persistent uh, configuration basically whenever you reboot it comes back up um, basically, you would need you would need to do these couple things. Uh, first, edit your Etsy sysctl.conf and add this net.link.tap.up underscore on underscore open equals one. So that way that sysctl variable is done at boot. And then you need to edit your boot slash loader.conf and you need to add vmm load equals yes to load the vm subsystem nmdm load which is some like modem thing which i think is some sort of virtualized network system uh, if bridge load equals yes to load uh, if config basically to be able to do a bridge and then if tap load to do a tap interface and then the last thing you would need to do is in your etsy rc.conf 
you would need to add cloned interfaces equals quote bridge zero tap zero and then if config underscore bridge zero equals addm em zero this would be the name of your physical interface if intel it might be like igb zero uh but that's the name of the physical interface and then addm tap zero which was the name of the tap interface that we created and then we just do that and now whenever we reboot our vms will be persistent now the other thing we can do to make loading vms a little bit easier instead of doing the uh you know that long command every time and they get longer actually especially once you start getting into vnc you can copy user share examples beehive vm run.sh and then call it you know i'm going to call it freebsd.sh because it's doing a freebsd vm and then you need to make it executable so chmod plus x freebsd.sh and then go ahead and open it up and basically change some of the configurations so the default size is 512 megs i want uh 1024 and it says it's a read only we'll just force it i only want one uh the tap device is dev zero so the v the default vert io disk is where you we would put uh the guest.img and this would actually be the freebsd iso that we use for installation um, if we are actually going to use the script for installation, which you can. So let me go ahead and just do, this will be, I called it guest.img. I'm not going to really worry about the release ISO because I'm not that concerned about it right now. And then basically all we would do is .wac freebsd sh, and then you have to give it a name. I'm going to call it freebsd again. And there you go. We have our freebsd ISO. And that's pretty much it for installing FreeBSD inside of Beehive. So that's pretty much all I have for you today. Uh, sorry again for the delay. I hope that, you know, I keep saying sorry and they keep getting delayed. I hope eventually that stops happening. Um, I really didn't want to do this video without having network on the FreeBSD VM because it's kind of pointless. Uh, I, yeah, I'd, had a, I'd have a VM, but I'd access it only from the console. So I'm glad I finally figured that out. Be prepared for more Beehive stuff to come next week. Also, I'm not going to get a chance to do the release series uh, for a while because I'm doing these Beehive stuffs. But FreeNAS uh, 10, now known as FreeNAS Corral, ooh, fancy name, uh, has just come out. So go ahead and give that a try. I need to update my FreeNAS server. Kind of scared to, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to doing that. Hopefully, I'll have the opportunity to get an IX Systems one soon with Corral and then buy some drives and do all that. But definitely get a chance to check out the new FreeNAS if you hadn't already. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to come back and see more, go ahead and subscribe if you already haven't. Or, you know, send it to your other friends to subscribe. I'm still getting active subscribers pretty much like one or two a day, which is pretty awesome. You know, there's over 500 people on the channel now that like coming back and seeing me talk about, you know, BSD stuffs. And honestly, I think that's pretty cool. I'm glad to know that more than one BSD channel can succeed here. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next week, everybody.